Hallelujah to Jesus, friends, and welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus, the Messiah, is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of First Enoch. I have placed a link in the description box below if you'd like to follow along with us. Today we are in chapter 95, and we're going to try to make it through chapter 99. And so let's pick up in chapter 95, verse 1. Oh, that mine eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters. Now, even though we're picking up right here today, you got to remember in the last chapter, chapter 94, it ended by saying specifically in verse 6, Woe to those who build unrighteousness and oppression. Woe to those who build their houses with sin. Woe to the rich, for they've trusted in their riches. And then it says later on down in verse 10, it says, For your fall there shall be no compassion, and your Creator will rejoice at your destruction. And so with this concept in mind, Enoch begins, as we read a moment ago, Oh, that my eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters. Why? Because they are eternally doomed and separated from the love and the mercy and the compassion of God. And they shake their fist in his face, continuing to do what they want to do, live as they want to live, and refuse to surrender. And this causes heartbreak for Enoch, and so should it for you and me as well, friends. Well, he continues, That's so I might rest from my trouble of heart. Who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness? This is a very interesting question because the reason people do not want to surrender to the Most High God is because they look to themselves and think of themselves as gods. They are the ruler of their life. They are the God of their life. They're the ones who decide what they do, how they do, and when they do. And they don't want to surrender to a higher power whom we know is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so judgment shall overtake you sinners. Fear not the sinners, ye righteous. For again will the Lord deliver them into your hands, that ye may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. Woe to you who fulminate anathemas which cannot be reversed. Now, fulminate simply means to explode. An example of that would be like dynamite. And of course, anathema is a curse. Paul tells us in the New Testament, he who teaches any other doctrine than that of the Lord Jesus himself, let him be anathema or let him be cursed. So in verse 4, when it says, Woe to you who fulminate anathemas, it's basically saying, Woe to you who explode curses which cannot be reversed. So this would seem to be meaning not just a single curse, but a constant flow of curses, and these curses cannot be reversed. Healing shall therefore be far from you because of your sins. Verse 5, Woe to you who requite your neighbor with evil, or you repay your neighbor with evil, for you shall be requited or repaid according to your works. Woe to you lying witnesses and to those who weigh out injustice, for suddenly shall ye perish. Woe to you sinners, for you persecute the righteous, for you will be delivered up and persecuted because of injustice, and heavy shall its yoke be upon you. Chapter 96. Be hopeful, ye righteous, for suddenly shall the sinners perish before you, and you shall have lordship over them according to your desires. And in the day of the tribulation of the sinners, your children shall mount and rise as eagles, and higher than the vultures will be your nest. And you shall ascend and enter into the crevices of the earth, and the clefts of the rock forever as conies before the unrighteous. Now, a cony is simply a rabbit-like animal. And so it says, as this rabbit-like animal hides in the rocks, so shall the righteous. During this time of great suffering and anguish upon mankind, many of the righteous will hide in caves and in places among the rocks in the mountains. Sirens shall sigh because of you and weep. Wherefore, fear not. 
you that have suffered, for healing shall be your portion, and a bright light shall enlighten you, and the voice of rest you shall hear from heaven. Woe unto you sinners, for your riches make you appear like the righteous, but your hearts convict you of being sinners. And this fact shall be a testimony against you for a memorial of your evil deeds. Woe to you who devour the finest of the wheat, and drink wine in large bowls, and tread underfoot the lowly with your might. Woe to you who drink water from every fountain, for suddenly shall you be consumed and wither away, because you have forsaken the fountain of life. Woe to you who work unrighteousness, and deceit, and blasphemy. It shall be a memorial against you for evil. Woe to you, ye mighty, who with might oppress the righteous, for the day of your destruction is coming. In those days many and good days shall come to the righteous, in the day of your judgment. Chapter 97. Believe ye righteous that the sinners will become ashamed, and perish in the day of unrighteousness. Be it known unto you, ye sinners, that the Most High is mindful of your destruction, and the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction. What will you do, you sinners, and whither will you flee on that day of judgment, when you hear the voice of the prayer of the righteous? Yea, you shall fare like unto them, against whom this world shall be a testimony. You have been companions of sinners. And in those days the prayer of the righteous shall reach unto the Lord. And for you the days of your judgment shall come. And all the words of your unrighteousness shall be read out before the great Holy One. And your faces shall be covered with shame. And he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness. Woe to you, ye sinners, who live on the mid-ocean and on the dry land, whose remembrance is evil against you. Woe to you who acquire silver and gold and unrighteousness, and say, We have become rich with riches and have possessions, and have acquired everything that we have desired. And now let us do what we purposed, for we have gathered silver, and many are the husbandmen in our houses, and our granaries are brimful as with water. Yea, and like water your lives shall flow away. For your riches shall not abide, but speedily they shall ascend from you. For you have acquired it all in unrighteousness, and you shall be given over to a great curse. Chapter 98. And now I swear unto you, the wise and to the foolish, for you shall have manifold experiences on the earth. For you men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and colored garments more than a virgin, in royalty and in grandeur, and in power, and in silver, and in gold, and in purple, and in splendor, and in food, they shall be poured out as water. Therefore they shall be wanting in doctrine and wisdom, and they shall perish thereby together with their possessions, and with all their glory, and their splendor, and in shame, and in slaughter, and in great destitution, their spirit shall be cast into the furnace of fire." I have sworn unto you, you sinners, as a mountain has not become a slave, and a hill does not become the handmaid of a woman, even so sin has not been sent upon the earth, but man of himself has created it. The Lord God Almighty has not sent sin upon the earth. It is not his creation of his making, but it is man who is desired to follow the will of his own heart, and that thereby is sin. Enoch continues, Under a great curse shall they fall who commit sin. And barrenness has not been given to the woman, but on account of the deeds of her own hands she dies without children. I have sworn unto you, you sinners, by the Holy Great One, that all your evil deeds are revealed in the heavens, and that none of your deeds of oppression are covered nor are they hidden. And do not think in your spirit, nor say in your heart that you do not know and that you do not see that every sin is every day recorded in heaven in the presence of the Most High. From henceforth, you know that all your oppression wherewith you oppress is written down every day till the day of your judgment. Woe to you, ye fools, for through your folly shall ye perish." And ye transgress against the wise, and so good hap 
shall not be your portion. And now know ye that are prepared for the day of destruction. Wherefore do not hope to live, you sinners, but you shall depart and die. For you know no ransom. For you are prepared for the day of the great judgment, for the day of tribulation, and great shame for your spirits. Woe to you, ye obstinate of heart, who work wickedness and eat blood. Whence have you good things to eat and to drink and to be filled? From all the good things which the Lord the Most High has placed in abundance on the earth, therefore you shall have no peace. So basically Enoch is saying, you partake of food that is provided by the Lord God himself every single day, yet the knowledge of this escapes you and you refuse to give thanks to the one who's provided it for you. He continues in verse 12, Woe to you who love the deeds of unrighteousness! Wherefore do you hope for good hap unto yourselves? Know ye that you shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous, and they shall cut off your necks and slay you, and they will have no mercy upon you. Woe to you who rejoice in the tribulation of the righteous, for no grave shall be dug for you. Woe to you who said it not the words of the righteous, for you shall have no hope of life. Woe to you who write down lying and godless words, for they write down their lies that men may hear them and act godlessly towards their neighbor. Therefore, they shall have no peace but die a sudden death. Chapter 99. Woe to you who work godlessness, and glory and lying, and extol them. You shall perish, and no happy life shall be yours. Woe to them who pervert the words of uprightness, and transgress the eternal law, and transform themselves into what they were not, into sinners. They shall be trodden underfoot upon the earth, it's interesting that it says transform themselves into what they were not. They have been transformed into sinners, but that's not the way that they were created. They were created as righteous with a desire to please God in all things. But because the wickedness of their heart has guided them, they have allowed themselves to be transformed into rebellious enemies of the Most High. They shall be trodden underfoot upon the earth. In those days make ready, you righteous, to raise your prayers as a memorial and place them as a testimony before the angels that they may place the sin of the sinners for a memorial before the Most High. In those days the nations shall be stirred up and the families of the nations shall arise on the day of destruction. And in those days the destitute shall go forth and carry off their children and they shall abandon them so that their children shall perish through them. Yea, they shall abandon their children that are still sucklings and not return to them. Maybe this is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 19, Woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. I don't know about you, but I've always wondered why that was put there. What does that mean? I assume that it meant that the destruction of mankind would be so great that mothers would hate to see their children killed in such a devastating manner. But what Enoch tells us here is that they will abandon their children. And because of their children, they will perish through them. And once they have abandoned them, they will not return to them. And not only their children, he says, but they will have no pity on their beloved ones, which would appear to be their most closest of family members. Enoch continues in verse 6, And again I swear to you, you sinners, that sin is prepared for a day of unceasing bloodshed. And they who worship stones and grave images of gold and silver and wood and stone and clay, and those who worship impure spirits and demons, and all kinds of idols not according to knowledge, shall get no manner of help from them. And they shall become godless by reason of the folly of their hearts and their eyes shall be blinded through the fear of their hearts, and through visions in their dreams. Through these they shall become godless and fearful, for they shall have wrought all their works in a lie, and shall have worshipped a stone. Therefore in an instant shall they perish. But in those days blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom and understand them and observe the paths of the Most High, and walk in the path of His righteousness. 
and become not godless with the godless. They do not conform themselves, in other words, to this world. But they conform themselves to the word of God as faithful representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And so he says, in those days, blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom and understand them. And they, those who observe the paths of the most high and walk in the path of his righteousness and do not become godless with the godless for they shall be saved. Woe to you who spread evil to your neighbors, for you shall be slain in Sheol. Woe to you who make deceitful and false measures, and to them who cause bitterness on the earth, for they shall thereby be utterly consumed. Woe to you who build your houses through the grievous toil of others, and all their building materials are the bricks and stones of sin. I tell you, you shall have no peace." Woe to them who reject the measure and eternal heritage of their fathers, and whose souls follow after idols, for they will have no rest. Woe to them who work unrighteousness and help oppression, and slay their neighbors until the day of the great judgment. For he shall cast down your glory, and bring affliction on your hearts, and shall arouse his fierce indignation, and destroy you all with the sword or the word of his mouth and all the holy and righteous shall remember your sins. Well, that brings us to chapter 100, friends. So we're going to end there today because as you will see, if you continue to read on, there seems to be a break in thought here. So this is a perfect place for us to pause today. But in looking back over the last few chapters that we read, I find it an interesting contrast in the world that we live in because people today clamor to speakers who will tickle their ears, who will make them feel good. But there is nothing that makes one feel good, whether you're a sinner or a saint, in what we have read today. Because we are going to see many of our friends, many of our neighbors, many people that we know through television, radio, and sports, the entertainment industry, many famous preachers, and so-called Christian musicians. We're going to see these people cast into eternal flames, being separated from the Lord God. And as Enoch started out today, this should bring clouds of water to our eyes. Should we look to the hope that is set before us with great anticipation? Absolutely. But in looking ahead, it's impossible to forget who's behind us, those who are being left behind. And even though it is based upon their own choices, our hearts still break for them and it still should trouble us very deeply. Well, friends, I love you. I'm truly thankful that you spent a few moments with us today. I pray that your journey with Christ is being blessed by seeing this ancient book, which has been kept from us for so long and seeing how the Most High is speaking through it even today. And so I trust that this has done nothing to cause confusion in your journey, but it has added to your journey and made the path that you are walking day by day more pleasant in knowing what has been promised and what lies ahead of us. On that note, friends, we'll end. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.